Hello, today is Thursday. It is the 17th of May, 2012, and after eight consecutive down days in a row pending a major afternoon capitulation move, this will break that streak and it will be an update today, up about 2.5% uh, as of now. And uh, this is actually the first time since the 27th of April where we've had a higher high point of the day than uh, the previous day every single day, whatever the highest variable was for silver. Well, the day before, the day after it was lower, but not today, because yesterday, just a bit below 28. Today, excuse me, yesterday was just a bit, bit below 28. Today, just a bit above 28. What's important here is holding 61.8 from point A, which is about 26 and two thirds, and point B, which is however high it rallies to, and then. By doing such and then breaking whatever the resistance has to be will help enable this 18 average to flatten out and eventually go higher. Weekly chart, and uh, this is really the third or fourth test of 26 and change, depending on how you want to look at it. This was a tested here on support, here, here, and so far in here. What would be uh, an interesting number now is roughly around 30 and change, uh, 30 and a half, 30 and two thirds. That was a level of uh, previous support after it touched the 26 level. So you went from 26 up to 35-ish with like that area being support. Then you went back down to 26. This time you went up to 37 and the same number being support. Well, now we're pretty much there. It's, right now it's a pierce above. And therefore uh, coming up to this level and... That would be huge to be able to hold 61A, but uh, if it does something like this, then hey, it's all fine. And uh, yeah, so also you got this as a double top, which quite frankly is two reverse verse U, so maybe it should be uh, a double reverse U. And uh, it needs to really break down this uh, neckline to be. A, uh, a negative situation, but that's not always the case. S&P 500 had a severe, severe double uh, top in uh, 2008, 2009, and it, it didn't capitulate from its uh, 600 and change low, so that's no guarantee for that to uh, be the case. And uh, now let's take a look at gold on the uh, daily time frame, as it's pretty much the same as silver. You have this previous support band, which just like silver at 30, this is gold at 16.20. As well, you have point A to whatever point B has to be. It really needs to hold the 61.8% uh, level. Let's go, we'll quickly look back at the daily chart for silver. As we've seen a consistent downtrend, but the volatility is still really not that big. And uh, I want to go back to October the 10th, 2008, which is the most volatile day silver has had, at least since the, uh, the decade started and probably since the uh, early 1980s. And on October the 10th, this was a 10-minute time frame. Now, the time's on the bottom. This is from a European site. I'll give you the, the links and the more information to get the data, as well as I'll show it at the end of the screen. But... 10 minute time frame, there was one candle that went from about 10 and a third down to uh, 9 and a quarter, or 9 and 30, about a dollar we'll say. Now a dollar move on $10 is that of 10%. 10% in 10 minutes. And that was after it had already fallen that uh, just many hours before from just a little over 11 so that was about 13% before it had lost 10% in a 10-minute period. Now, how good was it to panic here and sell? Yeah, we can look back after the fact and say, well, silver had went from 10 up to 50 and now back to close to 30, or it's pretty much tripled since this low. And when you notice that it's been down so much that it's just an obvious time to get in, then, well, you'd be doing okay. Now, if we take a look at this on the daily or the 60-minute time frame from back then, that was a pretty severe capitulating move. You're just going into sideways consolidation from about 11 and change up to about 12 and change, and it in itself that's about seven eight percent. 
And then that would have been the two straight hours of just huge, huge downward movement. On the daily chart that day, this is what the daily chart looked like. So what we, we knew was that it had already lost half of its value. A little more. So how much more was it actually going down, you might say? Was there a chance it goes down to 4? Was there a chance it goes down to 5 or 3? Or was there a chance we never, ever go back above 12 again? Those are some of the questions you'd have to ask yourself if a market is down way too much. And in this case, now this wasn't the day of the bottom. It would bottom a couple weeks later, but it wouldn't go too much lower. It would break barely below 9 and even for them, that wasn't that quick. But this day, the movement from the highest point to the lowest point was a little over 9 to 12. That's over 30% from the lowest point to the highest point, and that, that's the most volatile day. But a lot of things were going crazy that day because on the stock market, this is the Dow Jones Industrials hour, hourly chart. That was the day of the short-term bottom of 8,000 that would later get tested in November and again in March of 09. Now, what I find interesting is how well the exponential Fibonacci worked back then, even though nobody's seen it. No, they see linear Fibonacci, but not exponential. Maybe a few people might have. From the high of uh, 11.2, pretty much, and this low, well, what happened after the 10th of October was you had a weekend. So the 11th was a Saturday, the 12th was a Sunday. And on the 13th, that, that was the 1,000 point day, which meant that the price actually went above here. If you were looking to sell at this point, well, you got your gain, but you could have got more. If you were looking to short, well, that didn't work too well unless you had patience. Because after the 1,000 point day, on Tuesday, the price actually gapped up right to the slide and it topped, and it never, ever seen those levels again until 2010. So it went up, and then it just started going lower, but it found resistance at the 61.8% retracement fairly fast, which is why I talk about some, where for a thing to be a failure, it needs to hold and stay uh, above a level like this, depending on which side of the fence that you're looking at for up or down moving movements, because if it's going up, you have to hold above. If it's going down, you got to stay below. Now, the data that I'm getting this from is on uh, livecharts.co.uk forward slash historical data.php. I found this a couple days ago. And uh, this allows you to get data for pretty much the S&P 500 stocks. There's a lot of different things in there. Currency pairings, gold, silver, platinum, palladium. And you can get so many different time frames, the one minute, the 10 minute, the hour, the daily, the weekly, the monthly. You can get up to 2,000 periods, which is uh, quite a lot. And it can get historical stuff. So silver on this site goes back to 1997-ish, 1998. I haven't checked, but I guess you can get every single minute of data going back to that time frame. Because when I was getting data for the silver... I just got uh, all the 2,000 periods ending October the 10th, 2008. And then, of course, this is what it got me. Alrighty, thank you for tuning in and have yourself a magnificent day. Bye-bye.